my name is Sebastian and if you saw some of my videos before you probably saw that I use the Linux command line for pretty much everything on my operating system and I'm not even using a file explorer anymore and in this video I want to show you a few tips and tricks how to become more efficient on the command line and how to well do most of the things that you want to do using automation using the command line and of course using the keyboard. So first of all, what I want to show you, so this one here is a keyboard uh, overlay display. So you see what I'm actually typing here. And as a very important uh, tip, you have to make sure that you can start up command lines just very quickly. So usually I have something like the super key and just enter and you can uh, check out my configuration. I will link this in the uh, video description below. And this one opens up a Z shell for me. That's the shell uh, what I'm using and why? Well, first of all, what is a very important tip to become efficient on the command line and to not use a file explorer. First of all, you have to navigate or being able to navigate faster than with a file explorer because usually you would use your mouse to, you know, zoom around and then click on the different folders and open them up. And it's actually much easier to do this in a shell, especially in Z shell. Uh, first of all, you can, um, well, change directories without typing CD. So that's a little bit easier. You can just, you know, type something like, for example, go to the home directory and things like that. And what also helps, you can auto expand hierarchies of directories, well, with one uh, stroke of tap. What this means is as follows. When I say I would uh, like to go to, uh, for example, my workspace directory, Sebastian Dashner, I have a project that is called the Quarkus Playground and I want to go to source main Java to the Maven Java structure. I hit tap once, this auto expands and I can hit enter to change to that directory. And of course, go back and do all of these um, things. So what that is, these are a bunch of aliases and Z shell uh, commands that I highly recommend to check out because that just makes the navigation much more convenient and more easier. So this, for example, D is a command that shows the last uh, directories and then you can use that's an alias. This one, for example, CD minus one to switch to the uh, previous one and then just jump back, back and forth. So this uh, works uh, quite well. And if I say, well, I would like to jump there, it's almost like a jump mark. You can go to the previous directories. I know a lot of developers who are also uh, fans of these uh, commands, um, pop directory and push directory to this stack. So you can do this uh, here as well. You can do quite, uh, qu quite some sophisticated things with directory stack here. But just to switch directories and then jump back and forth helps a lot. And now already if we compare this with some file explorer, this makes you much more productive in just switching directories. So jumping around is much you know, more fun than just using the mouse for all of that. And in combination with some aliases, this works as well quite nicely. For example, um, I say I would like to have an alias for example, to go to the workspaces of my uh, my name. So I type this and I have an alias expansion also installed. So again, link down uh, below if you want to check out the material uh, that I have on this uh, regard. But this also just helps you to navigate to the typical places where you want to go much faster. So I like this already much more than using a file explorer. But what actually you would like to, uh, you would need from a file explorer, I prepared a few files for you here, is just the opportunity to just in, um, interact with these files quite nicely. So instead of saying, well, I would like to, you know, double click or something like that on these files to open them up, um, I have a few examples here. What you can use in Z shell is what is called a suffix alias. I will show you uh, this on my dot files directory that is also available on GitHub. So for example, for the aliases, what it can do is, is called a suffix alias, where the shell alias of something that you type in, if it's a file, and then it ends with, well, dot PDF, for example, then you can define a, pro uh, a program or a command to run this, to open this up. So for example, if you say, well, for these type of files, I would, uh, I have one, um, you know, Linux viewer of some uh, images, for example, installed, and I could say, okay, uh, please open up this logo of my effective developer podcast, then you can uh, show this up here. So it starts up this program while well, in the background process, and I can just use it as such. So same with that uh, teaser of the video course that I have. So you can just um, open up files here. You can also op uh, open up multiple ones. I can say, 
uh, for example take all of the PNG files here with tap by the way in the shells you can typically also expand um, this globbing how it is called and then it also works with multiple ones and I can say well open up all of the files that match this particular pattern that's already quite interesting so you know you can uh, combine this here to just say if I would like to open up some things um, this is a little bit similar to what uh, is defined in macOS with this open command. You can even define your own open command and then make some more sophisticated switching depending on uh, the file name or file extension, for example. And well, once you define that, you might say, well, Sebastian, this doesn't really make sense because my operating system already defines such things. Well, depends. I would say this is a very pragmatic way if you're just uh, browsing in the command line to just define some things uh, that you would need quite often. So for example, for a zip file, I define how I would like to interact with it or even with a Java jar file, then I can define a command for it. So for instance, if I say I have this file for the zip file here, I can say, well, text zip, that would just show me the contents of the zip file. Or you would say, well, you would like to unzip it already. So this is uh, showing unzip uh, dash L and just showing the contents here, for example. So this works uh, quite nicely. It's the same if I have some um, HTML uh, page. So for example, this index um, HTML, I can just define that I say index HTML would just open up my browser and that works really nicely if I then um, am working with these file for some files for some local development or something like that. So just whatever you need for that sort of handling, this works uh, quite nicely for the files with the file extension and Z shell um, suffix aliases. So that's something that helps here quite a bit. But now on to more the editing of files, especially if I want to move something around or copy something around. For me, what is always very important is, well, to navigate quickly, we've already seen that. And then also, well, to see some overview quite nicely. And this is even nicer than in some what you see is what you get program, I think, because I can just use some shortcuts. For example, this is a shortcut that I defined control K. Similar YK, well, because control L does the clear command and control K for me is just also very convenient to press with one keystroke is basically clear and well, do the listing of the current directory. So where I'm currently located, this is just the contents of the directory or show this with some tree like structures, control J or H for some more um, for some more depth into this graph. So show me the current directory graph. Now, if you compare this again with some file explorer that you would use, like with a UI tool, I think this is already more convenient because it's quicker to, to interact with. And usually most of the UI programs, sadly, don't interact with the keyboard that nicely. So they don't allow you to have such nice keyboard shortcuts as opposed to what you would define um, for shortcuts that are just easy to reach especially here on, uh, with these command line shortcuts. So I think that's just quite nice because I can define some commands. I could customize them how I want. I could change and swap out some commands, just what is more convenient for you. For example, what I'm showing here is just, well, an alias L that would be something like um, LS and then dash AHL or something like this. But what I'm using actually instead of this is a, a program that is called EXA. So this you can um, Google for that uh, program if uh, if you want to, which is just a little bit different view of this LS uh, view with a different color highlighting and things like that and the ability uh, to change something here, which I like more. So in the same way, like, uh, for example, you can have the bat command instead of cat. So that is an alias here. Cat for me is actually now the bat command. And if I say I have something like a um, a programming a f a language file or some syntax layout um, some syntax file with HTML here it will show me some coloring uh, some syntax highlighting which is just a little bit nicer because you know then you have that functionality as well and with this I think it's very easy to just look into your file system and to explore it and even to get this view in a more effective way than if you would use well a file explorer but now in to talk about a little bit um, about copying and uh, modifying files. So for example, if I say I would like to um, rename some file around, so for example, this file.txt uh, 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 file, I could say, well, rename this with uh, in, in some way. So for example, 
say file should be renamed to 00 or 01 file.txt or something like this. How you can do this? Well, just in that way, I can just rename something here and then it's gonna be uh, renamed. Well, that's quite obvious. So I can um, use the move command or the copy command as you know them. But what I can also do, it's really helpful once you get used to the command line a little bit to use globbing and some other, um, well, extra syntaxes um, here in the shell. So for example, I can say, do this with zero one dash, and then just write it here once. And I can even press tab to see what this expands to. I don't have to, but then I see I can do the same thing. What is also quite helpful again to combine is with some other shortcuts. So another shortcut I'm using is for control T to just include the current date in this um, writing. Where I can say, well, I use this actually very often because typically, especially with some PDF documents for taxes or whatever, I just include the current date. And then I say, well, if you would like to rename this in such a way that I include the date and then I write it as such, and then I have renamed this file actually very quickly. So for me, this is even easier than going to the file explorer, clicking somewhere or pressing F2 and then renaming things like that. It's just more convenient once you get used to these sort of shortcuts. And on the command line, you just have more um, capabilities available to extend all of this, to use some small helpers, to use some shortcuts. You can get uh, really creative here. Um, it's the same if I would like to include the current Unix timestamp and things like that. It's it's just helpful uh, to do these sort of things. So these were some tips that you can use to get more efficient while using the command line and to somewhat replace your file explorer. And especially then if you have an operating system and a window manager, so I'm using i3 here on Linux, that allows you to also use these windows efficiently. So for example, I can very quickly open up a split um, screen view here with while jumping in, um, into the same directory, like opening up a shell, but not in the default directory, but in the same directory. So I use different shortcuts for that. It's really efficient to use this sort of, well, this tool, the command line, for, re uh, for replacing a file explorer. And then of course, for doing all sorts of other work task items or whatever you would need to do. Because especially on a Linux computer, and I've said this before, it's very efficient to use the command line for pretty much everything because everything that the computer can do can be controlled by the command line for such an operating system. And the more you get used to it, the more time you spend in there, I think the more efficient it is to use and you will really think of it or you can really do this as a long-term investment in order to become more effective as a developer. Now, all of these things are available uh, for you to check out, so link down below. And if you are interested in this topic of developer productivity in general and many, many more tips, you can also check out um, a video course that I have on this topic, link down below. And if you found this helpful, I would really appreciate a like. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.